morning was to head to Warrington, but they don't have a slip that's wide enough for us. So we're going to divert and go over to Astoria. Wasn't supposed to be this much wind out here. We got about, I don't know, 15, 20 knots on our nose right now. So we're going to power over. And a lot of traffic out here so far. Seeing a lot of ship traffic. Actually coming pretty close to us. They're showing up well on AIS. So I just cut out of the channel for a little minute just to let him sneak by, then I'll get back into deeper water. Pretty blustery so far, but enjoying it. We just now passed Warrington, which was the original little stop that we were gonna spend a couple days there because there's a lot of stores and some other attractions that we wanted to see. There's a fort there, um, and we also wanted to do a little zip lining. It's supposed to be an amazing place there. So we are now going to head over to Astoria and stay there for, I don't know, a couple of days and take in the sights. Maybe we'll take a bus into Warrington. We're not sure yet, but it is freezing out here. We weren't supposed to get any wind, but as you can see, we are sailing. So that's nice. We'll probably be into Astoria in about, I don't know, probably another half hour. So, yeah. Cold. <laughs> I'm so cold. Summer cannot come soon enough, guys. Entering the Astoria Marina, there's supposed to be a really cool maritime museum here. It's a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Okay, we just pulled into Astoria. It's a nice little protected marina in here. And it's right next to this really cool bridge, That's too. That's Highway 101 right there. It spans so far. I think it's like four miles long. It's just massive. Anyway, so there's some neat things to do here, I think. But first, let's go check in. Yeah. So I make a log entry any time we move the boat, whether it's one mile or a hundred miles, I make an entry. And I think it's important to keep a nice accurate log for our boat for a couple reasons. You know, I like to reference this in the future. I could track maintenance in here. Uh, it's fun to just look back and look at the geographic positions, where we've been, what dates they were. I even enter weather conditions, uh, engine hours. All sorts of information, whether or not we're sailing, motor sailing, or or just motoring. I enter how much water we take on, how much fuel we take on, even if we caught a fish that day. So it's it's a great tool. It's a great navigational tool, and to look back at it over the years, it acts as a nice diary for our lives, and I really enjoy this part of cruising. So I've made my entry. You know, I don't only use this. I, there's quite a bit of other navigation tools I like. Uh, every time we move the boat, I do a little research and I really enjoy that. I like my cruising guides. There's a lot of information in here and 
I like to have cruising guides for wherever we're at and wherever we're traveling. It's nice information to have. I don't just like to rely on electronic charts. You know, they're getting better and better, but they're not always 100% accurate. So we do keep paper charts on board. And using all these different tools, I feel like we're being as safe as we can. After our 100th episode, Teal and I checked the forecast for Westport and it was forecasting to blow like stink for the next three or four days. So we took this opportunity to rent a car and drive 400 miles to Eastern Washington to go and visit Emma's great granny. She and Emma have an amazing connection and we take every opportunity to see family as much as possible before we head out of this area. Teal also got to see his best friend and they went on a riding trip. So we got all the weathers on this trip. Teal went up to the mountains and they, uh, his, his friend had this Polaris Ranger and they like four by it or whatever. I don't know. They had a lot of fun. And we, Emma and I got to catch up with some friends and old classmates. So that was just a great time. And on the way out, we stopped by our favorite butcher, Doug and Dana Owens um, from Owens Meats, realized that we were going to be in the area and they told us to stop by, which obviously we would, um, but they gifted us with something pretty special. They know that Emma is a big ribeye eater, so they gifted us with these amazing prime ribeye steaks. So you guys know what I'm going to be doing with these. I think I'm going to make some special meals. So thank you so much to Doug and Dana uh, from Owens Meats. We really appreciate that and we just had a great time. Owens Meats was established in the coal mining town of Roslyn in 1887, two years before Washington became a state. Surviving through the Great Depression and the coal miners' strikes, Owens rebounded and in 1937 opened their doors to its current location in Cleallum, Washington. Fast forward five generations later, Owens has become our favorite butcher and is definitely the candy store for the carnivore. There you yeah. go. Okay, thanks for the steaks, guys. Woo, you're welcome. Yeah. Enjoy. You guys notice that there's only one steak in front of me? That's because we've already eaten two of them. These steaks are so big, it's enough to feed all three of us with just one. So I decided to put a spin on how to prepare these steaks. These alone on, with just salt and pepper is enough, but it's nice to kind of change it up a little bit and find different ways of preparing it. So I thought it would be fun to prepare it three different ways over the course of three days for the crew. So for the first meal, I prepared a simple, classic, straightforward, just steak and potatoes. But I put a little spin to it because you can just use your salt and pepper, but I have a special seasoning that I love to use and it just kind of kicks it up a notch. So what I did with it was I just salt and pepper, both sides liberally, and then you do a pan sear and finish it off in the oven. While that meat is resting, I um, went to prepare the horseradish. Teal loves horseradish he, and he likes it hot. He hasn't found one that is hot enough for him, so I have found an alternative and that is just to keep the horseradish root on board and I just grate what I need. And all you do is you use a microplane and mix it with a little vinegar, salt, and sugar and that heat is enough for him. He loves it. For every meal, I am pairing it with a signature drink. So I thought what better way or drink to have for the first meal is a Manhattan.
So meal number two, I decided to go completely opposite of the first meal and went Asian because, well, <laughs> why not, right? And it's so simple. The marinade only takes about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour to sit in. All it is is a little soy sauce, oyster sauce, sriracha, and lots of black pepper. You just let that sit, and I also paired that with um, an Asian slaw and some white rice. Really simple, but it packs a huge punch with flavor. For that, because there's so many flavors there, I finished that one off with sake because we have that on board. And I just, I loved it. It was just amazing. There was not one bit left over. So for our last steak, I figured we have to finish strong and go big. Back in Westport, we were so fortunate because it's Dungeness crab season. So we have a ton of crab on board. So I've decided that we're going to make steak Oscar uh, with scalloped potatoes and my version of a verde sauce. And these are so large, I am going to split them in half and wrap them in butcher's twine in order to uh, get these cooking. While the meat is resting, I'm going to make the drinks and tonight's signature drink is going to be an old fashioned. I have all the stuff for it and it is pretty yummy. I'm so excited. Today we're going to Astoria's Maritime Museum. It's only a mile and a half away, so we're gonna walk. <laughs> Come on, Emma, let's do it. The Columbia River Maritime Museum is home to the largest collection of Pacific Northwest maritime artifacts in the country. Located about 10 miles southeast from the mouth of the Columbia River Bar in Astoria, Oregon. The extensive display of artifacts and exhibits seek to capture interactive experiences that honor the people who earn their living or protect the safety of the mariners of this rugged coast. The museum highlights the rich history of this area from the booming salmon canning days through both the world wars and this region's impact on world trade. The exhibits on the Columbia River Bar and the amount of boats and souls that have been lost over the last century was sobering. This stretch of the coast has been called the Graveyard of the Pacific, and the Columbia River Maritime Museum has impressive collections that definitely support that title. The Columbia was the fourth and final lightship stationed at the mouth of the Columbia River. These lightships guided vessels across the Columbia River bar from 1892 to 1979. Because of its importance, the Coast Guard had a permanent 18-man crew and one warrant officer who served as the ship's captain. The crew worked on two to four week rotations, with 10 men on duty at all times. Life on board the lightship was marked by long stretches of monotony and boredom, mixed with times of rough weather and fierce gale force storms. <laughs> That was a busy week, and I really, really enjoyed the Columbia River uh, 
Maritime Museum. It was Museum. really good. Yeah. I mean, we learned a lot oh, this about is this area. Amazing, the history and everything that's happened the over the yeah. over the past century here. Yeah. It is. It was, it was uh, very really cool. Oh, but I gotta say, the highlight of this week has to be the food. I just so enjoyed <laughs> those meals, especially meal number one with a fresh grated horseradish. My all-time favorite. What about you? Well, I'm a little biased. I am going to go for the Asian marinade because it packs a huge flavor. It and I good. love the Asian slaw to go with it. Oh, so I know. That's that... my favorite. What about you, Emma? I liked all of them, so I would probably have the first one for breakfast, the second one for lunch, <laughs> and the third one for dinner. Of course. And then another one for dessert. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> this kid is crazy. She loves her steaks. But also, uh, thank you to everybody that has come by our merchandise store and purchased some of our gear. Um, and a huge thank you to everybody that has sent in pictures. But we need more. We know that you guys are out there. So remember to send us a picture of you in it so then we can share that. Anyways, guys, if you like this episode, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Come back next week to see another cool new video. See you then. Bye. Bye.